turned around. A man in white and gold stood there. Dalinar jumped, scrambling backward. The man was old, with a wide, furrowed face and bone-white hair that swept back from his head as if blown by wind. Thick mustaches with a hint of black in them blended into a short white beard. He seemed to be Shin, judging by his skin and eyes, and he wore a golden crown in his powdery hair. Those eyes. They were ancient, the skin surrounding them deeply creased, and they danced with joy as he smiled at Dalinar and rested a golden scepter on his shoulder. Suddenly overwhelmed, Dalinar fell to his knees. I know you, he whispered. You're... you're him. God. Yes, the man said. Where have you been? Dalinar said. I've always been here, God said. Always with you, Dalinar. Oh, I've watched you for a long, long time. Here? You're not the Almighty, are you? Honor? No. He truly is dead, as you've been told. The old man's smile deepened, genuine and kindly. I'm the other one, Dalinar. They call me Odium. You think you'll do better? Dalinar wet his mouth, which had gone dry. Do better than others would for this land? You, a manifestation of hatred and pain? They call me Odium, the old man said. A good enough name. It does have a certain bite to it. But the word is too limiting to describe me, and you should know that it is not all I represent. Which is? He looked to Dalinar. Hashem, Dalinar Colin. I am emotion incarnate. I am the soul of the spren and of men. I am lust, joy, hatred, anger, and exultation. I am glory, and I am vice. I am the very thing that makes men, men. Honor cared only for bonds, not the meaning of bonds and oaths, merely that they were kept. Cultivation only wants to see transformation, growth. It can be good or bad, for all she cares. The pain of men is nothing to her. Only I understand it. Only I care, Dalinar. I don't believe that, Dalinar thought. I can't believe that. The old man sighed, then heaved himself to his feet. If you could see the result of honor's influence, you would not be so quick to name me a god of anger. Separate the emotion from men, and you have creatures like Nail and his skybreakers. That is what honor would have given you. Dalinar nodded toward the terrible fray on the field before them. You said I was wrong about what caused the Radiance to abandon their oaths. What was it really? Odium smiled. Passion, son. Glorious, wondrous passion. Emotion. It is what defines men, though ironically you are poor vessels for it. It fills you up and breaks you, unless you find someone to share the burden. He looked toward the dying men. But can you imagine a world without it? No. Not one I'd want to live in? Dalinar stood. You shouldn't have revealed yourself, Odium. I once feared you. But it is easier to fear what you don't understand. I've seen you now, and I can fight you. You've seen me, have you? Curious. Odium smiled again. Then everything went white. Dalinar found himself standing on a speck of nothingness that was the entire world. 
looking up at an eternal, all-embracing flame. It stretched in every direction, starting as red, moving to orange, then changing to blazing white. Then somehow the flames seemed to burn into a deep blackness, violet and angry. This was something so terrible that it consumed light itself. It was hot. A radiance indescribable, intense heat and black fire, colored violet at the outside. Burning. Overwhelming. Power. It was the scream of a thousand warriors on the battlefield. It was the moment of most sensual touch and ecstasy. It was the sorrow of loss, the joy of victory. And it was hatred. Deep, pulsing hatred, with a pressure to turn all things molten. It was the heat of a thousand suns. It was the bliss of every kiss. It was the lives of all men wrapped up in one, defined by everything they felt. Even taking in the smallest fraction of it terrified Dalinar. It left him tiny and frail. He knew if he drank of that raw, concentrated liquid black fire, he'd be nothing in a moment. The entire planet of Roshar would puff away, no more consequential than the curling smoke of a snuffed-out candle. It faded, and Dalinar found himself lying on the rock outside Feverstone Keep, staring upward. Above him, the sun seemed dim and cold. Everything felt frozen by contrast. Odium knelt down beside him, then helped him rise to a seated position. There, there. That was a smidge too much, wasn't it? I had forgotten how overwhelming that could be. Here, take a drink. He handed Dalinar a water skin. Dalinar looked at it, baffled, then up at the old man. In Odium's eyes he could see that violet-black fire, deep, deep within. The figure with whom Dalinar spoke was not the god. It was merely a face, a mask. Because if Dalinar had to confront the true force behind those smiling eyes, he would go mad.' 